In a time when man's curiosity was leading to great discoveries that helped explain the forces present in the universe, one young student showed great curiosity for the way different structural elements experienced bending stress. The student would conduct a series of tests, isolating one variable at a time, in hopes of determining a formula for bending stress. For his tests, he would associate a beam's bending stress with its amount of deflection, an easily observable characteristic. First, the student looks at how the length of a beam, or its span, affects the bending stress of the beam under a constant load. He notices that with a long span, the beam deflects a decent amount, meaning the beam is undergoing a decent amount of bending stress, whereas with a relatively short span bearing the same load, he notices the deflection, and therefore the bending stress, to be noticeably less. So, the greater the span, the greater the bending stress, and the lower the span, the lower the bending stress. Therefore, the student determines that bending stress is directly proportional to span L. Next, the student observes how the location of a load along a beam affects the bending stress. He notices that placing the load only a short distance from the beam support causes only a slight deflection, and therefore a low amount of bending stress whereas placing the load at a greater distance from the beam supports results in noticeably more deflection or higher bending stress. So, the greater the distance from the beam supports that a load is placed, the greater the bending stress, and the lower that distance is, the lower the bending stress. Therefore, the student determines that bending stress is directly proportional to the distance d that the load is placed from the beam supports. Now, the student observes how the amount of load on a given beam affects the bending stress. The student was not surprised to find that a small load causes only slight deflection, or a low amount of bending stress, while a larger load placed in the same location causes more deflection in the beam, or greater bending stress. So, the heavier the load, the greater the bending stress, and the lighter the load, the lower the bending stress. Therefore, the student knows that bending stress is directly proportional to the load P. Before moving forward with his tests, the student notices something interesting. He has found that bending stress is directly proportional to both load P and distance D. And since load is synonymous with force, the student can combine these findings to reveal that bending stress is directly proportional to force times distance. But wait, the student recognizes force times distance as the formula for moment. Therefore, he concludes that bending stress is directly proportional to the moment. By this point in his experiments, the student knows that the orientation of a given rectangular beam under a given load has a significant effect on the resulting bending stress. Take for example a 2x4 in both vertical and horizontal orientations. Even though the beams have the same cross-sectional area, the student knows that the vertically oriented beam is much stronger or it experiences less bending stress because it has a higher moment of inertia. The horizontally oriented 2x4 would deflect much more under the same load experiencing much greater bending stress. So, the larger the moment of inertia, the lower the bending stress, and the smaller the moment of inertia, the greater the bending stress. Therefore, the student realizes that bending stress is inversely proportional to the beam's moment of inertia. Finally, thinking back on his previous tests, the student remembers something interesting. He had noticed that when a beam deflects downward under a load, the top of the beam must shorten in length, and the bottom of the beam increases in length all while the center line of the beam stays the original length. The student concludes that the area above the center line is experiencing compression, increasing in magnitude as the vertical distance C above the center line increases, and the area below the center line of the beam is experiencing tension, increasing in magnitude as the distance C below the center line increases, all while the center line of the beam is in neither compression or tension, and is therefore known as the neutral axis. So, the greater the vertical distance, C, from a beam's neutral axis, the more bending stress the beam material is experiencing, whether it is compressive stress above or tensile stress below the neutral axis. Therefore, bending stress is directly proportional to the vertical distance, C, from the beam's neutral axis. With nothing left to test, the student looks back on what he has learned by observing the bending behavior of beams. He has determined that bending stress is directly proportional to bending moment, directly proportional to C, or the vertical distance from the beam's neutral axis, and inversely proportional to moment of inertia. 
The student combines this knowledge into one grand formula. Bending stress equals MC over I.